All right, the first is a scalar. A scalar is a quantity with magnitude only, and a magnitude defines how big something is, its size, its, sh its the shape it takes up. Um, so when you t think about magnitude, that's what you're thinking about, the, the size of it. And now when we're specifying a scalar in physics, you want to specify an amount, 45, 33, 9 times 10 to the minus 6 and some kind of a unit because a number without a unit in any science including physics um, means nothing so you must have both some examples 45 miles 87 miles per hour 14 kilograms and 2,359,000 seconds now of these four examples there are two which are always scalar quantities. The first is mass, so 14 kilograms. And in physics, kilograms is the fundamental unit we use when we're specifying a mass value. Now this is different than chemistry, so be aware of this. And the second is time. So our seconds uh, amount is our other scalar quantity, which remains a scalar. And in physics, seconds is our fundamental unit of time. So all time intervals must be converted to seconds when used um, in mathematical equations. There are some problems with scalar values. If you look at the, equa at the, at the sentence, John goes hiking 20 miles, there's a problem because if something were to happen to John, there's not enough information given to actually find him because John could be anywhere on a circle with a radius of 20 miles. And this is the limitation of, of scalar values. Sometimes it's enough, but in most cases it's not. So the second term is a vector and a vector is a quantity with magnitude and direction. Now again, ma the magnitude is the amount and the size plus the unit, just like it was with a scalar. And you have to have a direction. Now direction can be east, up, down, plus, minus, um, west, anything that describes the fundamentals of that unit, of that, of that quantity. Some examples, 23 miles east, 28 miles per hour plus 2,938 meters per second squared up. Now, in this case, it's 22,938 meters per second squared in the direction up. All right, now let's consider the earlier example. Say so John goes hiking 20 miles. Now, if you if you add the word east, that now you have a vector quantity and it works better because now you could figure out where on the circle he's going to be because you, you know where to go to look. However, there's still a problem. Can you see what it is? All right, so to solve that problem, we have a term called the reference point. And the reference point is the position where all motion starts. It's the zero location, so where displacement is zero, where distance is zero, where speed is zero. Okay, so if you go back to the example and you add a reference point, John goes hiking 20 miles east, starting from the biggest oak tree in Claudius Crozet Park, all right, so you specify the amount he traveled, the direction of his motion, and the place he started. So the scalar value is the amount he traveled, the vector you get when you add the direction to his motion, and then the place he started is our reference point. There are scalar and vector measurements for a number of, of our motion um, vocabulary. The first category is path measurements. The first is distance. Distance is the physical measurement that a path, ha uh, 
the physical measurement of a path that an object travels. Okay, it is a scalar quantity, and the direction of the path has no bearing. That means if he travels east, then west, then east, then west, then east, then west, you're going to count. You're going to you're going to add every one of those individual um, measurements together to get the total um, distance measurement. All right. The second is displacement, and that's the straight line measurements between the reference point and the final position. All right, vector, it's a vector quantity, and that means direction has meaning and is required. All right, so if you look at an example, you got a turtle that travels some distance to the right, turns around, and then travels some distance to the left. All right, defining to the right as positive, you have a reference point is where he started, so he's got 20 feet to the right. He turns around, goes 15 feet to the left, which means he has a distance is 20 feet plus 15 feet, or a total of 35 feet. His displacement is plus 20 feet, because we define to the right as positive, and in a lot of cases, the initial direction of motion is the positive direction. And you're going to add negative 15 feet, which is the opposite direction to it, and you get a total of plus 5 feet. So you can see between the two of them, there's a 30 foot difference between their measurements. Now, distance and displacement will remain the same as long as there is no change in the direction of motion. But once you have a change in the direction of motion, you're going to start to see that difference between them. Um, come come to pass. All right, here's an example for you to try. Sally headed out shopping, leaving home. She traveled 15 miles north where she shopped at Forever 21. Then she, she traveled three miles more north and went to the Gap. Then she traveled eight miles south to go to Walmart before traveling two more miles south and stopping at Outback Steakhouse. What distance did she cover? and what was her displacement. So pause the video now and when you have your answers start the video again and you will see what um, the right answers are. Alright so she traveled 28 miles and her final displacement when she stopped for dinner was 8 miles north.